I want to bring You're in welcome. Martisa now, columnist for the Washington Post, resident fellow, American Enterprise Institute, and a Fox News contributor. How you doing, Mark? And good morning. I'm good, Bill. Good How are you? To you? I'm reading your headline here, John Brennan and the Trump-Russia Hall of Shame. Uh, what do you think happens with Adam Schiff? <laughs> Democrats have the votes. My sense is he's not going anywhere, is he, Mark? He's not going anywhere, but look, they're absolutely right that he should resign. Adam Schiff is a disgrace. And look, there are a lot of people out there in the, in the Trump-Russia collusion hall of shame, uh, reporters and pundits and commentators, uh, who said that he had colluded with Russia, coordinated with Russia, which we now know is not true. Um, but they were speaking from a pinnacle of near-perfect ignorance. What is really insidious are people who had access to classified intelligence, like Adam Schiff, who implied that, they're in, that they knew something that the rest of us didn't, that there was intelligence, that there was proof that Trump had colluded or coordinated with the Russian government when it didn't exist. I mean, just a month ago, Adam Schiff went on Meet the Press, and, and he said, I can't go into the particulars, but there is more than circumstantial evidence now that Trump colluded. And he said there would be a, a conspiracy on the size and scope probably beyond Watergate. I mean, and what he was very clearly suggesting in those comments is that he knew something we didn't. You know, it's one thing for a New York Times columnist or, or a, a newspaper columnist or a commentator on TV to say Trump colluded with Russia. It's another thing for a guy who's getting classified briefings to come out and say things that are patently yeah, and, untrue and, and, that's the point and then continue on in that position. I, I, I want to bring in now Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief at TheDailyWire.com and author of the new book, The Right Side of History, How Reason and Moral Purpose Made the West Great. You and I were going to talk about sundry things tonight, and now we are focused in on something that you have been watching, and that is how Democrats deal with this. Your first reaction, and then I want to bring in some tweets from some of those 2020 Democratic hopefuls. Well, it's astonishing to watch as the Democrats turn their lonely eyes from Robert Mueller, who was supposed to be the deus ex machina who stopped President Trump to the Southern District of New York. They're doing that in real time. They're claiming that maybe, just maybe, once the entire report is released, then it will tell us something different from the fact that there are no indictments, as we now know. And it, it will be amazing to watch them shift the goalposts. I've, I'm seeing the media already suggesting that the big story is that President Trump is going to pounce. Whenever Republicans are exonerated or so, of something, then it becomes a story about Republicans pouncing. It's never about media malfeasance for two years, suggesting beyond the evidence at hand that President Trump was responsible for deep, dark collusion with Russia that ended with Hillary Clinton losing the election. You know, Ben, you and I have talked before, and it's always interesting when people jump the shark on things. So Republicans should hold their enthusiasm on behalf of the president, and Democrats should hold their enthusiasm uh, e either thinking it's a dud coming out in this report and getting thirsty for more investigations. Here's what we have. Uh, 2020 Democratic hopeful Kamala Harris, senator, says this in a tweet. Americans deserve to know the truth now that the Mueller report is complete. The report must be released immediately and A.G. Barr must publicly testify under oath about the investigation's findings. We need total transparency. Has William Barr, either previously in his confirmation hearings or anything you've heard since, Ben, said anything other than he will follow the rules and regulations and release the report? It's his intention to release as much as possible. No, I mean, I've heard nothing except that from Attorney General Barr, and I would expect that he releases as much as he legally can, because if I'm President Trump, that's actually what I want released. Plus, A.G. Barr has already vowed that that's exactly what he's going to do. We keep hearing that President Trump obstructed the investigation over and over and over. There is not one iota of evidence that he actually obstructed Robert Mueller, and I wouldn't expect him to obstruct Attorney General Barr here either, because the bottom line is, no indictments. If there were going to be more indictments, you would expect it to be of all the people around President Trump. Forget about President Trump himself. You know, there are people on the left suggesting that the reason no indictments came down is supposedly because you can't indict a sitting president. Okay, but you could indict everybody around him. None of those people got indicted. So that suggests that this may be a giant nothing burger. We don't know yet. But the Democrats already suggesting preemptively that this is all a giant cover-up is just as they shifted the goalpost from it was, it was collusion first, then it was obstruction. Now they're shifting to preemptive narratives about cover-ups that haven't taken place yet. You are crisscrossing the country often. I see you popping up at universities and other places and talking to future voters, present voters. What is the temperature of people out there about this subject matter? We saw recently polling which showed that there was a growing number of Americans who felt like this was in fact what the president has called it, a witch hunt, which means it's far and broad and wide. And what are people telling you? 
I mean, what I keep hearing over and over is that people were ready to hear the facts, but in the end, they don't feel like there was going to be much that comes down. And if it turns out that not much came down, after Democrats overpromised for years on end that there would be hard evidence that President Trump skewed the election with the help of Vladimir Putin, that's going to be that's going to blow back on them. I mean, you, you promise your base that you're going to get President Trump out of office and have him frog marched like the Krasenstein brothers, <laughs> and things are going to go wrong for you when that turns out not to be true. Uh, this is just coming in. Senator Booker's campaign has just released an email urging supporters to add their name to a list if they support the release of the Mueller report. If you sign, it leads to a page to donate to the campaign. This is coming from my executive producer, normally on Outnumbered Overtime. Uh, so fundraising off of this. Again, I mean, the, the, the idea of jumping the shark is what gets you in trouble with the American people because, as you said, they just want the facts. I mean, it is such an obvious ploy. Every single thing that can be used for a fundraiser is used for a fundraiser by candidates for political office, obviously. But preemptively suggesting that Barr is going to engage in a cover-up, so sign a petition and give me money, is a pretty absurd use of everybody's time and money. Uh, ben, you know, in terms of this new book that you've come out with and, and talking with young people, and we saw the president sign an executive order this week on free speech, the idea that people listen and talk to each other from every political avenue. What's going on right now should be a bipartisan effort to find out how much, if in fact, because we already know they did, how much the Russians uh, meddled in our presidential election. I want to give you last word on where you think we are right now. I mean, I think where we are is that Democrats are going to have to double down on what they already believed about President Trump. But I think that the best way for President Trump to be fully exonerated with the American public is for Barr to release as much as possible, which I think he will do. Is that going to stop the investigations? No. Mm -hmm. Will it stop the Democrats from looking to the SDNY? Of course not. But at the very least, it should give us a, a final word on what happened with Trump and Russia in 2016. So far, the only evidence available appears to be nothing criminal. Yeah, everybody's saying the same thing. They want to see it all. Uh, and now we've got Senator Booker. Of course, he's a 2020 Democratic presidential hopeful uh, trying to raise some donation money off of it. Uh, but we all want the same thing, and that's just the facts. Uh, ben Shapiro, always great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's time to face the truth. The media got this story wrong. They obsessed on this for three years. All this time, there was no evidence for it. It was just a conspiracy theory. Rachel Maddow, the most influential liberal TV host in the country, every single night misled millions of liberals into believing something that was totally false and there will be no media consequences for it. And that is extremely grave and serious. This is the saddest media spectacle I've ever seen since I began practicing journalism in 2005. And what makes it even sadder is to watch all of the people who vested their journalistic credibility into what proved to be a complete and total fraud and scam continue to try and cling to some vestige of credibility by continuing to spin conspiracy theories that are even more reckless and more unhinged than the ones to which we've been subjected for three years. The great journalist and writer Matt Taibbi wrote in an article over the weekend and I agree with him completely that as humiliating as the media debacle was leading up to the Iraq war, what they did over the last three years in the Trump-Russia story makes all of that look like a pimple. Even though obviously the Iraq war was much more destructive because it led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people, the errors and lies and falsehoods and recklessness and speculation that we've been subjected to over and over and over that Robert Mueller just definitively debunked is far more humiliating journalistically, far more unjustifiably journalistically, and who knows where it will lead to. It's ratcheted up tensions between the two most dangerous nuclear armed powers in the world, Russia and the United States, that the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists says has brought us to two minutes before midnight on their doomsday clock. So it's also been extremely dangerous in ways that we don't yet know. Let me just say two things. Number one, everybody knows, and I don't care how many people try and rewrite history, that the central question that everybody was obsessed with for three years was did Donald Trump, his family members, and his aides conspire and collaborate and collude with the Russians to interfere in the election. It is absolutely false that Robert Mueller simply said there's not enough evidence to convict with a reasonable doubt. He said something much, much, much more important than that. He said that after 20 months of investigation with a huge team of FBI agents and prosecutors heralded as being the most aggressive and skilled in the world, we found no evidence that this happened. That's what Robert Mueller said. 
The whole thing was a scam and a fraud from the beginning. And the New York Times headline today says that as clearly as it can, Robert Mueller finds no collusion between Trump and Russia. That was the focal point of the entire narrative, no matter how much people try and change the focus. Rachel Maddow and MSNBC are the Judy Millers of this story, except unlike Judy Miller, who was scapegoated for doing things that her male colleague did and had her career destroyed, Rachel Maddow will continue to make $10 million a year for NBC because she's their most valuable brand, and there will be no reckoning and consequences for this story that the media got radically, fundamentally, and deliberately wrong for almost three years now in a very dangerous way.